Our next reader is Ellen Woods, also from Berkeley, California. Um, she did win an honorable mention in the humor category and uh, yet will be reading today from her honorable mention creative nonfiction piece entitled Transforming. Transforming. For much of my life, worry had been my talisman. So deeply ingrained was my mother's refrain, the things I worry about never happen. I believed that preparing myself for the worst possible outcome successfully warded off disaster. But since her death five years ago, I had begun questioning that belief. The habitual state of worry mind was robbing me of the joy I desired. I began to wonder if I could simply trust myself to deal with whatever presented itself. It was 1995 and I had just turned 50. I was traveling by van to Tassajara Zen Center, a training monastery open to the public in the summer. I planned to immerse myself in meditation, float mindlessly in the Tassajara Creek, and enjoy the natural sauna that arose from the creek and flowed into an ancient steam hut. My hope was to let go of my worries and discover my, mo my own inner mantra to replace my mother's. What harm could befall me at this peaceful retreat? Rattlesnakes, I heard the driver say. They live amongst us, so be mindful not to step on one. When I was six, I told him, my father taught me to ride a horse by reminding me to, de to befriend the huge creature and to cherish that deep bond. Do you think rattlesnakes respond to the learned fear that we have of them? After a moment, he began to speak. I heard of such an incident. As the story goes, one warm day, a group of monks extended their walking meditation to the courtyard, where they came upon the four-year-old daughter of one of the residents. She was playing with a rattlesnake. The monks, as if one body, formed a circle around the child and the snake and stood there in silence, their minds and hearts embracing the girl and her playmate. They smiled in case the child noticed them and became fearful, but she was accustomed to their brown-robed presence. Eventually, the rattlesnake, rattlesnake slipped away and the girl ran off to find her friends. I was struck by the power of his story as we drove down the mountain toward the retreat center. That evening, I walked to the creek. After shedding my clothes, I entered the dark water. The steam hut, a moss-covered sanctuary, beckoned to me as I swam to its perch on the rocks downstream. I climbed up the two stone steps and entered the wooden structure, lit only by the moon that shone through a small skylight. Hello, I whispered and was greeted with only an echo. I treasured the solitude as I closed the heavy door, leaving everything I knew behind. When my eyes got used to the dark, I made out a bench along one side and stretched out on it, feeling its slippery wetness beneath me. As my breath deepened, I entered a dreamlike state. A clicking sound began to fill the space, gradually growing louder, like a cicada or maybe a cricket. Soon it returned to silence. As I lay there, something slithered up my belly to rest between my breasts and curled around itself. In a deep state of calm, I looked through the mist to face unblinking eyes staring from an elegant triangular head. It rested on my chest as if awaiting a response. I recognized that it was a rattlesnake, yet oddly, I was not afraid. I welcomed, I welcomed its presence, sensing it as a spiritual teacher. For several minutes, we remained connected this way, silently at ease. Then, as quickly as it came, it slithered away, leaving in its wake a tissue-like replica of itself, a skin outgrown and no longer of service to its expanding body. With no attachment to what was left behind, the serpent didn't look back, but dis disappeared through a crack under the doorway to the icy river below. I was aware of, an ab of its absence, a weightlessness where it had been, and I knew that a change had occurred in me. 
A ray of moonlight caught a luminous vapor arising from my body until it slowly disappeared, leaving me feeling emotionally and spiritually uplifted. A new clarity of purpose propelled me as I arose from the bench. Pressing against the heavy door, I exited the chamber and slipped into the water, not knowing what was ahead and yet open to whatever came my way.